also ask Mr. Vishwanathan to um, uh, do the honors. Uh, today happens to be an, in another important day. We are uh, launching a new program for the law school. As most of you know, we have um, a three-year LLB program and a five-year uh, BA LLB program. Uh, we are in the current academic year. We have launched the two-year LLM program, uh, the classes of which will begin in August 2010. And I'm requesting Mr. Vishwanath to release the admissions brochure for the current academic year. You may give the first copy to our chief legal advisor, Dr. Francis Julian, and then to our registrar, Mr. Man Shah. Thank you very much, Mr. Vishnathan. Now I would request um, Dr. Francis Julian to give his presidential remarks. Thank you, uh, Professor Rajkumar. The topic, law, society, and government, it's a, it's a very broad topic. So I thought how I I should say a few words about it and I wrote down some of my thoughts so that it will be a, an introduction to what our distinguished speaker is going to present today. Law connects society and government. A society without law creates anarchy. Government is the institution which administers law. The object of administration is the welfare of the society. When the government fails to govern, the society suffers. A state where the government fails to govern is termed as a failed state in the modern parlance. We see it in Somalia. Somalia is a classic example of a failed state. Therefore, rule of law and good governance are fundamental to any modern welfare state. About the relationship between the rule of law and the government, ancient philosopher Pluto said as follows, to quote, where the law is subject to some other authority and has none of its own, the collapse of the state, in my view, is not far off. But if law is the master of the government, and the government is its slave, then the situation is full of promise, and men enjoy all the blessings that the gods shower on a state. The above words of Plato clearly underlines the supremacy of rule of law in a society. The government has the most important responsibility to administer the rule of law for the welfare of the society and the state. We have a very distinguished and the fittest person to talk among us. Mr. Vishwanathan as a professor of law, eminent academic, scholar, and head of the law department of government of India is the most competent person. He will throw much light on this area, this vast experience and expertise. Thank you. My young friends uh, from India and abroad. I am very happy to be here for more reasons than one. Because <coughs> I started my career as a law teacher four decades ago. And if Dr. Asma really can end up my life as a law teacher. I started my career as a professor of law, teaching law and books. For nearly a decade I taught varied subjects from US students to international thoughts. <coughs> and I shifted to government as a draftsman. The legislative department of the government of India is concerned with drafting of legislation for the government of India, central government. I spent a considerable amount of time there drafting many legislations for nearly two decades. <coughs> then I shifted to law commission. That is, that is an area where you see law in the making how laws are made. When you draft the legislation, it doesn't end there. You follow it up to the parliament, get it passed, appear before the committees, then also you see it enacted. So you see law in the making. Then you, I went to law commission as a member secretary, where I had occasion to work under the prestigious judges, even maybe a journal 